Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Gibran, and I'm an editorial fellow at the Journal of Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology, or GIPO, and I'm a fellow in Investigational Cancer Therapeutics at MD Anderson Cancer Center. Uh, we have an exciting interview here for GIPO today, and I'm honored to introduce Peter Keller, who's the Chief Executive Officer at Nopteros Therapeutics in Boston, Massachusetts. The title of this article is uh, Translational Studies Using MALT-1 Inhibitor s mepazine to Induce T-Reg Fragility and Potentiate Immune Checkpoint Therapy in Cancer. Uh, Peter, thank you for joining us here today. So, Thank you, Shibran. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So let me begin by asking you about the background for this research on MALT-1 inhibition and the impact on the tumor microenvironment, particularly on the regulatory T-cells. Yeah, sure. So MALT-1 protease is the target that has been known for 15 years and is a driver mutation in lymphomas and leukemias. What our team has discovered is that there's an application of MALT-1 inhibition in solid tumors. And the background of this is that regulatory T cells, which are the major culprit in cold tumors for them not reacting to immunotherapy, uh, can be reprogrammed. So they're destabilized by the tumor microenvironment, for example, by the hypoxia that um, exists in the tumor. And that can be exploited to help to boost or shift the immune balance towards an immunoreactive phenotype of cold tumors that otherwise would not react to immunotherapy. And, um, and that has been described by the work of Dari Vinali at the University of Pittsburgh. And um, what, what happens with these destabilized T-Rex, they lose their immunosuppressive function and they start making interferon gamma, which then leads to a priming of the tumor for immunotherapy and cold tumors become treatable with checkpoint inhibitors, for example. And um, the question was, what can make those T-Rex change their phenotype and become reprogrammed? And our co-founder, Thorsten Mempel, as Mass General Hospital, discovered that MALT-1 protease is a key driver to keep the uh, T-Rex as immunosuppressive. So if you block MALT-1, you can uh, induce that reprogramming and prime the tumor for immunotherapy. He published his work in 2019. He used a compound called mepacine, uh, and so very strong anti-tumor effect with a single agent, but also in combination with a checkpoint inhibitor. Our work uh, that we are discussing today shows um, how we selected s as the compound to develop into the clinic, and it discusses all the preclinical and translational work we have done to start a phase one clinical trial with s which we initiated in 2021. Now, let's take a deeper dive into the article. Uh, can you briefly discuss the materials and methods used for this study? Uh, yes, sure. So we use the standard tools that are used in preclinical development uh, to validate a candidate for the clinic. Uh, that included molecular biochemistry, ADME work, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamic biomarker research, animal models, and ex vivo studies in human tissues. I would highlight uh, three methods that were either novel or had a specific rigor to it for our development. The first one is really a standard one. Everybody uses in generic tumor models in immune oncology. Um, and uses tumor-bearing mice. Um, we made sure that we chose the right models for what we wanted to show in the clinic. So we chose very poor immunogenic tumors that don't have any response to checkpoint inhibitor therapy um, uh, when, when it's done in monotherapy. And then secondly, we made sure those tumors were really established. They were fast growing and the tumor size when we started treatment was around 100 cubic millimeter or more. And that is something that's often neglected because if you start treating when the tumors are not really established, <clears throat> that doesn't really represent the situation in the clinic where you often get stage four cancer patients. In the vein of translational research, we also resected tissue from melanoma and colorectal cancer patients. And we transformed them in what is called patient-derived organotypic spheroids. That has been described by our collaborator, Russell Jenkins at Mass General Hospital. And um, here are spe specific cassettes that allow to keep the immune environment of the tumors intact and also allows to feed uh, test articles over time into uh, the, the cells. The system has been calibrated to represent actually pretty well what happens in the clinic with checkpoint inhibitors. So when there's cell killing with checkpoint inhibitors, 
in those spheroids, um, uh, then those cells typically also reacted in the clinic to check one inhibitor and vice versa. So, and in this setting, we have seen that as mepacine actually had activity on its own and also in synergy with PD-1. Um, and so we think it's a very good translational model because um, we, we really used human patient material. And also we saw that when we added into this system an interferon gamma antibody, uh, that the response, the killing that we saw previously with esmepacine stopped. So which is a very strong indication that the track, track effect that we observed in this model is associated with the interferon gamma cytokine, which is of course good uh, for validating the mechanism. And then lastly, I um, want to uh, point out that we are the first ones to publish a target engagement marker and method for MOLD1 protease. Our team members from the Hamels Institute in Munich discovered a new antigen to one of MOLD1's cleavage products, which is called SILT. And this, this antibody discovers the, the, the product that was developed or, or, or broke down by the MOLD1 protease. And uh, so, so we detected the, the cleavage products um, and the uh, amount of cleavage product we detect is inversely correlated with the level of inhibition, which allows us then to measure the target occupancy that we achieve at different dose levels. And that's important to us because we want to be in the 50 to 80% target inhibition range to see our Treg reprogramming mechanism at work. And now later on in the clinical biopsies, we want to use this novel method uh, in uh, histology images to detect in the tumor tissue how much of the mold one inhibition uh, we achieved by measuring how much cleavage of the silt substrate happened. Yeah, thank you for this information. Um, so now, uh, can you tell us about the anti-tumor activity of malt one inhibition um, and also its uh, synergism with checkpoint inhibition in your study results? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we started with the animal models. Uh, we had these three models, one immunogenic MC38, and then the two cold models I mentioned, D4M3A and B16F10. And we saw single agent activity in those three models and also a synergistic effect with uh, anti-IPD1 checkpoint inhibitors, specifically in the two cold tumor models. Um, and uh, of course, that was interesting. There is anti-tumor effect, um, but we want to make sure that this effect is really linked to the mechanism of Treg reprogramming. And therefore, we resected from the animals to tumors and uh, developed a flow cytometry method that allows us to measure the amount of interferon gamma producing regulatory T cells. And we found a clear rank order when we did this uh, several times, where the least percentage of interferon gamma making T regs were in the vehicle treated tumors. Then came the anti PD1 monotherapy tumors, followed by MOLD1 monotherapy. And the highest percentage was always in the combination of uh, esmepacine and anti PD1 checkpoint inhibitor. And more interestingly, actually, we saw a general an association um, between the percent of reprogrammed T-Rex and the, the speed of the tumor growth. So the, the more interferon gamma-making T-Rex there were, the slower the tumors grew in the animals, which is, of course, a very good indication that the mechanism is at work and the mechanism is meaningful to control the tumor growth. And Thank you so much. once you have established that, it's relatively natural to see why there's synergy and, and proof why there's synergy with checkpoint inhibitors. Because if you induce an, an, an inflammatory signature, PDL1 is expressed on tumors as a natural reaction of the tumor on the inflammation. And, uh, and then, of course, a checkpoint inhibitor helps to control this break on the immune system that we created by making the tumor more immunogenic. Yeah, these are uh, very exciting data. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, how can these results on reprogramming the regulatory T cells uh, be translated into cl clinical trials? Uh, what is your opinion on the future direction in this area? Yes, absolutely. So we, we this program that is um, described in the CHIPO uh, paper uh, led to the clinical trial that is uh, currently ongoing. We have completed the phase 1A part of this trial, which was a single agent dose escalation trial in all common solid tumors. In this trial, we defined the recommended phase two dose and uh, so that esmepacin was very well tolerated by the patients. Um, and uh, of, based on these results, of course, we want to now test the molecule in combination with the checkpoint inhibitor. 
and also narrow down the patient population to really go to patients that could benefit the most from this program. And for that, we have singled out ovarian cancer. Because one, in ovarian cancer, is very well known that regulatory T cells are highly immunosuppressive. And second, checkpoint inhibitors such as anti-PD-1 do not work in ovarian cancer. And um, the, another reason why we chose ovarian cancer as the coil expansion is that these patients often have ascites. And this is a great biomarker for us because when we take tumor core needle biopsies, we get very limited material, which is often not enough to look at reprogrammed T-Rex. Um, however, in ascites fluid, we get lots of material. And moreover, in uh, ex vivo experiments, we have seen when we incubate acidic fluid with esmepacine, we induce T-Rex reprogramming. So we are hoping in this called expansion trial that we can replicate um, the results of that in vivo study, and then, of course, of top, see clinical benefits of esmepacine monotherapy and combination therapy with anti-PD-1. And that would give us um, a, a good basis for larger trials because, one, we would have shown clinical activity, and secondly, we would have pharmacodynamic data that shows uh, the, the mechanisms is at work. Yeah, this is uh, an exciting new development. Uh, thank you so much, Peter. It was wonderful to talk to you. And uh, I would yeah. urge everyone, thank you. I would urge everyone to check out the published article in JIPO online. And thank you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure.